This is the Map Scout Challenge brought to you by OnX, where we examine the map, assess features like terrain, habitat, and access, then go out and rip it apart in person. And right now we're gonna show you the results, no holds barred, so that next time you go to public land, you have the confidence to scout, hunt, and kill whatever you're after. <laughs> What's going on everybody? <laughs> Today we're in Southeast Texas. This is Huntsville right here, Huntsville, Texas. There's the state penitentiary here. There's also a gigantic piece of public land property. It's called Sam Houston National Forest. It's about 160,000 acres, gets a ton of pressure. Also, there's a lot of area to spread out here. So what we're gonna be looking for today is deer sign, hog sign, and we're gonna try to find the infamous East Texas turkey. So I've been up since 3.30. I did a little map scouting on this thing. Good. Um, there's some thoughts I have about how to find a location in a large spot like this, Sam Houston National Forest. Uh, for some reason, my three spots that I picked up line up perfectly in a line, which is strange. But if you look south of us here, there's a huge metropolitan area known as H-Town holding it down. Uh, and a lot of guys from Houston are gonna come up here and hunt the National Forest, all right? So first and for foremost, I'm gonna cross off any of the properties that are some of the first ones that you can reach coming from Houston. And you're also gonna get pressure from the West because College Station's over there, a bunch of college kids need a place to hunt. Uh, I did that a little bit in college. There's um, 163,000 acres here. Yeah, it's big. It's big, so there's there's room to spread out. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something to think about as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think that things that you can access easily off the interstate are probably gonna be things that you can consider if you're trying to narrow it down, maybe st stay away from that stuff. So I picked out three spots that are slightly, maybe a little bit off the beaten path for different reasons. And we'll kind of discuss which one of these we're gonna go check out. Uh, this one here is actually pretty close to town, but it's only probably like, let's see how far is that straight line? Uh, that's almost six miles away from here. And like we're in downtown Huntsville right now. So uh, pretty close to town, but definitely not on the main drag, main strip. And I found that this is a place, there's like a county easement or something through here, pipeline, that might look like a road, but it's actually not. Mm -hmm. I think it might be one of the mo the least roaded spots around. And I think that's one of the big draws to people is that on National Forest, you can drive four service roads and get to places. So a spot to look at, spot to think about. There's also some clearings in here. Um, you know, maybe some timber harvest stuff or whatever. South of there, there's a pretty good sized chunk with some real good terrain. And I noticed that there is some food plots actually that I'm guessing that the Forest Service planted in there. So something to check out. I don't know if there is a road in there. There's a little like dotted two track, which makes me think that you probably can't drive it. Um, but there's a trail that cuts through there. And uh, where I put that dot, there's a couple food plots and there's a real good saddle right there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Looks like a decent spot. And then this place here is kind of pretty far off the highway. And it's one of those little forgotten little chunks. You know, what'd you say, 163,000 acres? Mm -hmm. Well, this little piece right here is probably 63 acres, okay? And it's right along a really good creek. And the stuff across the creek is all cleared out. It looks like cattle pasture and I feel like in a place where a lot of this is going to be standing yellow pine, that there's going to be maybe some hardwoods down there in that creek bottom, mm -hmm. and uh, might be a pretty good looking spot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know. I guess uh, we'll kind of evaluate and see which one of those. One thing we're probably going to look for a lot is, like Casey just mentioned, uh, some kind of diversity in habitat because mm -hmm. there's going to be a, this is pine country and there's going to be a lot of pine trees. So. You know, where can we find a place where there's different kinds of hardwoods or uh, there's an acorn crop in October or something like that. So uh, now that doesn't help us a ton this time of year unless it's like willow oaks or something and they're finally becoming palatable, the acorns that is. Um, but as far as like food sources right now, they're natural. We're gonna probably have some green briar, maybe some honeysuckle if you can get a place where the 
pines have let enough sunlight in for the honeysuckle to grow and uh, so we're gonna kind of be focusing on that while we're looking will this truck lay rubber if you hammer the gas right now um no because we're in park okay but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't think we have enough rubber to be laying any no i think we should hang on the rubber we got back there so if you're uh, watching this and you own goodyear please uh, contact the element wild right. or come. if you have some used tires for sale <laughs> truck on a forest service road now we're on a forest service trail we just saw some hikers come down multi-use area of course it's kind of kind of cool really but um we're on national forest land so all weapons are legal i've got a 22 tyler's got a shotgun we're hunting squirrels and rabbits for sure if we see them and if i see pigs it's legal so um we're gonna go down this trail and then get off the trail when we get to the creek bottom at the bottom and kind of just you know, trailblazer way up the hill over there, head to the pin that I dropped. It's in the middle of a saddle, kind of near some clearings or food plots or something. And just kind of scout it out from there and see what we can find. Already seen some white oak leaves and some red oak leaves here on the ground. Definitely plenty of browse in here for deer. What we're standing here is kind of the point of a secondary ridge that comes down into this creek. And uh, we walked a Forest Service trail and then we got off trail for a while. And uh, we noticed that there's definitely some transition lines or edges here where pine and yule pine kind of meets oak bottom and uh it's cool to us because there's white oaks here we don't have those at home but uh i don't think they're anything special here but the deer definitely will be hitting those whenever the white oaks are falling i think we'd like to find something like this just deeper in the woods i do think that there's still probably some pressure going in here and uh i'm actually glad that i had a map saved offline because we need to go that way and i was thinking that we were going to follow this creek further but the two creeks came together right down there so we're actually gonna go through this thicket and end up on a saddle over there and also we've got um different type of like swamp or water oaks and willow oaks and those kind of things so if you look at a place like this an oak flat right by the creek and you've got like those different types of acorns which are going to give you a food source that lasts throughout the whole season so if mm -hmm. we could find something like that over there near a saddle where you've got a break in the elevation. Ooh, is there really one? It's a big pig. Where's he at? So Tyler says this is stupid. I don't know what he's talking about. Cause there's deer sign everywhere. I mean, look, I even see a track, which is, you know, it's a big deal, right? We saw, track, right? saw a deer track, so deer here. I don't know what you're, what you're upset about. <laughs> Not a lot of deer sign. Mm -mm. Not a lot. So we made it to the top of the saddle. And I guess you could say top. It's just not as steep as what we were really hoping for. Um, and there's this old forest service road that I'm pretty sure is gated. We drove past it over there on the big road, but, um, Still, a guy could throw his bicycle off the back of the truck and be here in no time. So probably not getting a ton of seclusion here, even though we're pretty far from the road. Uh, my uh, actual point I dropped is that way a little ways. And uh, we'll probably walk that direction because there's some old clear cuts over there we want to check out. You can tell this has been selectively uh, not harvested, but they came in and cleared out the junk so the pine trees could grow, grow straight and tall plan on harvesting at some point in time and uh, I don't know it's just there's not a lot of concentration of deer in here we found a little bit of poop a few trails around more hawk sign than anything so browse on the blackberries that's right there's some browse on blackberries back there and that's probably done by deer so uh, there's some deer around we just got to figure out a spot to concentrate them so we can actually hang a trail camera and get deer on camera and, and know that it's a good spot so, so we're gonna find that eat lunch shoot squirrels I'm not necessarily go. in that order. Right. So we're walking down this lane, pretty much headed out because this is not that great. Uh, Casey's map, scout map scouting abilities 
I feel like there's not a ton of deer here for some reason, but there's a decent rub and it got hit in years past as well. So it's pretty tall for East Texas. I don't know, but uh, I feel like there's not a ton of pressure here. We haven't seen a ton of human sign. <sighs> Something about this landscape just is not supporting as many animals. So we're gonna kind of- I also think that we're running into a little bit of like a giant DMA problem where there's just like, they can go anywhere. You know what yeah. I mean? They've, and like, they've got plenty of cover. They got the same things to eat here as they do a hundred yards over there, or you know, 300 over there. So like, you, you kind of have to get boots on the ground, I think to put like three or four things together where it all meets up and matches up and that's where you're gonna find deer. Hopefully. Really what bit us the butt there is that saddle just wasn't as good as what yeah. you, you kind of expect it to be. It just was not really much of a saddle at all. So they're gonna pull the plug on this place and go find something a little bit different to, to look at. Cool spot, just no critters. <laughs> shoot pigs there's a lot of pigs here that's yeah. one thing i can confirm there's a lot of hogs we found a feeder out here on private. private and on public and it looked like there was definitely some deer using it going to it mm -hmm. And, but we're still gonna go back here and try to figure out where those deer are living and breathing and doing all their thing back here oh, don't go away. on the creek bottom back here. We're about a oh, third of the way back there to the creek and then we're gonna kinda tear up that. I think it's gonna be hardwood bottoms and then you can see that there's gonna be open pasture and stuff on the other side of the creek. So I really feel like it's gonna concentrate some deer, especially down here at the fence corner because that's just like the only place there's woods is right along the creek there, so probably a real good chance. I don't see a ton of human pressure in here, so that's good. Um, it's really kind of up there by the front, so still way more bucks on here than what there was where we were earlier. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of different trees and varied habitat in here, and a lot less of that kind of yule pond stuff that we were seeing there with tall, tall pines. I'm excited about this one, actually. This is going to be of the magnolia tree rub, and that there. picture magnolia tree rub it's a southern thing right there sir <laughs> Somebody's got to be doing something shady on Texas public land. <laughs> uh, ratchet strap package. Where he hung his tree stand somewhere. You want to take that back with you? I do. It's nice. Well, you uh, Could you not just put it right there? But there's, looks like this trail's got quite a bit of wear on it. Go down. Yeah. Side up there, which one now? Yeah, yeah. How many people are going to be walking it? So, can you feel it? I can, I can actually feel it, yeah. Good. yeah. Behind me, I have a creek crossing. So what we found was when we got to this transition line right here, uh, essentially what it is is a floodplain that causes the transition. So a couple of deep creeks, uh, obviously a very flat land, and then uh, a little bit of elevation rise up into the pines and stuff here. So we've got some oaks right along this creek right here. The creek is deep and steep enough that it is I mean, there's a definite trail down the side of it. So as we're following that up here, we come to this little place right here. Like I said, I've said before in oxbows, a lot of times that you've got is an extremely flat spot. Um, and that's what creates the oxbow. And so we see that here. And obviously because it's so flat, it's shallow, right? It causes a creek crossing. Uh, looks like there's actually been some cattle that have gotten in on this property as well. But we've definitely seen a couple of tracks that are game, whether it's hog or deer, it's hard to tell. But definitely game tracks. Shooting so, either one. They're crossing here. We're shooting either one. Might even shoot Osceola if we see it up in here because it definitely looks like that kind of country. Uh, this time of year with it being February, 
We've got a few weeks until the buck shed. Um, yeah, they're going to be losing a lot of testosterone. There's not going to be a whole lot of traveling. I'm not even sure what they're eating right now because the corn feeders are out of corn. The acorns are kind of out of, you know, oaks are out of acorns pretty much. It's just But like, there's a good chance they're hitting that open pasture and just trying to find green something. Grass. Yeah, yeah, green grass. You know, they we have wild rye, that's what we call it around here. I don't really know what, what it is, but it's just little green shoots that come up this time of year, especially after moisture. And uh, with the cold weather we got coming up next week, there's a good chance that deer do move around some. Mm -hmm. So yeah. getting this camera out right now is probably a pretty good plan. Yeah. And I think that um, between having the creek right here, like that oxbow, right? And then also a decent hill that comes down into it. Like this is about as good as pitches get mm -hmm. in this area. Come over here and we'll check out this uh, little, the, the uh, trail that essentially goes down the edge of the creek here. You see deer coming in or hogs or whatever coming in and crossing the creek on. But it also goes right through here, and this is the this is the trail that goes down the edge of this creek, down the edge of the transition line between pines, oaks, and the creek. And it's actually pretty narrow. I'm kind of excited about this actually. I was really down after that first spot. So Sam Houston National Forest is one of the biggest pieces of public land in Texas. It also just happens to have the least amount of deer of any place in Texas. <laughs> That's just partially true. There, I'm sure there's a lot of deer there, but it is Texas pine country. Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of deer. The deer density is a little on the low side. Big reason why that's low is it's pine country. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a whole lot of food there. Seeing that there's not a lot of food, you probably really need to concentrate on natural food sources mm -hmm. whenever you're in there scouting. And hopefully you don't find other stands in those natural food source places. Um, that's one thing that you're going to run into is that, you know, there's lots of acreage here, but there's also lots of pressure. And with that pressure is a Texas gun season. Mm -hmm. Good for opportunity, possibly bad for trophy quality. That's true. So let's talk about finding natural food. How would we go about doing that here? <laughs> it's really going to take just some good old fashioned boots on the ground scouting. One of the things you can do probably is get on Onyx here on the map and look and see what type of trees are where because you can usually tell the difference in a conifer and a deciduous tree on the map right so pines being the conifers deciduous being oak hickory all those types that are going to be down in this country so you're really going to want to target the oak trees if you can find persimmons that's our a number one food source for for whitetail deer when you're talking about natural food sources i mean they are literally draw deer in for miles right yeah. so if you can find something like that uh, one of the things with persimmons is they're kind of hard to find on the map. They do grow in groves, so you might be able to find a place where there's like a big, you know, kind of bottom area. They usually don't draw, grow in upland as much. They're usually more in bottoms. And if you find a spot that's been cleared in the past and there's little groves of trees, those might be persimmons. Yeah. Another thing you could look for are white oaks. We saw quite a few of mm -hmm. those, and so that could be something that is helpful as well as a food source. Um, you know, the thing that I saw around those white oaks sometimes was pressure. Um, you could kind of see flag and tape or maybe stands or whatever in some of those heavy white oak areas. One of the first places we came across that had a bunch of white oaks, uh, I believe we found some, some pressure there as mm -hmm. well. So um, you've got lots of acreage, but you've only got, like KC said, you can see the conifers from the map. And a lot of guys have figured out that you got to find, you know, some kind of deviation there to uh, in pine country to be able to find deer a lot of times. It's got to be an edge. It's got to be a uh, deciduous forest of some sort or a cut or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, there's got to be something that you've got to focus on to get away or essentially find deer. And then to get away from that pressure, you're basically going to – probably need distance in a lot of cases or just uh, happen to be one of those spots that's either overlooked or, um, you know, year to year, I think the pressure will change in these, mm -hmm. in these different locations just because there's so much acreage. A guy's going to get bored with the spot or something like that. So he may have hunted in there last year and just he's out this year. So. Most everybody are that way. They only hunt Sam Houston one year. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Actually, uh, a giant eight point got killed there this year. Right. Really? Yeah. And uh, it uh, kind of put it on the map for a lot of people. So there are some big, big deer that live down in, in this country. Um, and kind of like we said, if you're a guy who wants to go out with your gun, and you don't have time or care to learn how to shoot a bow. Uh, it's a great place to go out and do some gun hunting. In fact, we saw a lot of places where they had done some recent clear cuts or there was some lanes and different things like that that you can really use to your advantage you know the big thing with gun hunting is range 
right? Like mm-hmm. you can shoot a deer 200 yards plus. Um, of course, you want to be careful with that, of course. We'll put that disclaimer in there. But uh, if you are a gun hunter, you know, Sam Houston is one of the few places in Texas you can go with a gun and hunt public land deer. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's a meat hunter's paradise, I think, you know, at least just to be able to, for Texas to be able to go and hunt deer on public with with a gun i wouldn't say you might be able to kill one every time you yeah. go necessarily but uh that yeah that's that's one thing another thing you know we mentioned the pine country and i think uh, this is one thing that it, it could help you eliminate a lot of country i think that a couple of things you gotta think about when it comes to this um you might have to bring extra sticks if you're a guy that's packing in sticks just to get higher up in a tree because mm-hmm. you're not going to have a whole lot of cover low you may want to get higher in in those pine trees if you are hunting pine trees um and you know, for the guys that have climbers and like the climbers, this is the place to do it mm-hmm. in Texas. And you talked about it being a place as a meat hunter's paradise. One of the good things about Texas, and especially Sam Houston National Forest, is there are pigs. Now, they're not always the best for whitetail, mm-hmm. but if you're the kind of guy who wants to shoot stuff, which we're guys that like to shoot stuff, uh, you do have that option. You know, you can set up in a spot and you never know if it's going to be a deer or a hog that walks by. So you actually have at least opportunity to shoot some things, which is, is pretty nice as well. Yeah. So uh, let's jump on this map and find a couple places that we think would be good for hunting. So we're looking at the map of Sam Houston National Forest here. And it's, I mean, it covers a lot of ground. Uh, let's do a line distance from there to there. Is 46 miles pretty much like that take you two hours to get from one end of this thing to the other because there's no straight roads except north and south there on 19 or whatever that is and that doesn't go by any public land so we're going to exit out of this thing now discard that that was just to kind of show you and there's still some up here you know anyways it's a big place uh so you have a lot to look at okay i would say right now my number one hunting spot would be the place that we hung this camera this is one of those little overlooked spots, and I think that that would be what I would look for looking at Sam Houston National Forest mm-hmm. because it gets all the pressure mm-hmm. and because uh, it's a place where people can pick out stuff on a map and go to it, right? So this little thing is just a little hang down off of the National Forest, and you notice where we hung our camera, right here where the hill meets the bottom. And this all down here, when you get there, is a lot more clear uh, than what it looks like on here. I think the canopy's tall, but there's a lot of grassland underneath and stuff. And that camera showed up some pretty good stuff from, until the battery died. And I think that uh, we had mostly does on it now, but um, you know, you get into the fall, and there's gonna be some other good stuff walking around. And not to mention it's near water here, so there's going to be pigs around as well. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have some targets in there. And we actually found a decent amount of deer sign mm-hmm. walking in as well. So I like that spot. Remember the uh, magnolia rub we found? That was pretty cool. Hey, there's some cool stuff down there. Yeah. I, I dog on Sam Houston some, but it's a neat part of the country. It is. It's a really pretty area. There's yeah. a reason it's a national forest, mm-hmm. you know. So um, definitely is cool, man. The, the place, and I, I agree with you, I, I would like to hunt there. There was quite a few rubs around. Uh, you know, feeders on public and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> there was, that's right, I forgot. So, yeah, it was, it's, a, it's a great place to hunt, right? Here's a little spot, you know, you mentioned kind of the little out of, out of the way, overlooked spot. It's 155 acres total with a road going through the middle of it. Yeah. Um, so probably about, you know, uh, maybe 90 acres here on this side. And if you look at it, just kind of from the, the, the big uh, overview here, you see the Winter's Bayou that goes kind of along the north edge of this thing. And you see these hills coming off right here. Um, as you can tell, or at least I can tell, and I'm telling you <laughs> that there are pine trees on these hills. Uh-huh. These are the, these are the pine trees, and you can see the, the coloration. This is uh, going to be probably Novemberish uh, down there, where you can see the leaves are turning on these oaks. Some of them have already fallen. This might even be December down here, and so that shows you there's a bunch of deciduous trees down in here, kind of in the winter's bayou bottom, mm-hmm. and so. One thing I was looking at, I like to look for these things sometimes, and some guys might have some qualms hunting this, uh, especially you Michiganders. But uh, if you look right here, what is that, KC? That's a box blind. That's a box blind. And it's which, pointed at something else. <laughs> it's, it, this, is, uh, this is a food plot right uh-huh. here. There's, there's likely a feeder down in here somewhere, too. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys do that. This also, I think, might be a food plot. These deer are going to be visiting 
this stuff at night from this property. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's not a whole lot of elevation here or even the right kind of edge for me to just straight up just say that's the spot. But I think if you can get in there, scout your way in with some sticks on your back and get somewhere along this border right in here, maybe, you know, a lot of deer coming up through here into the back of this food plot, may even hunt somewhere right in here. I think you might be able to see some deer. Maybe it's a buck. Well, that bayou right there, you probably could find a creek crossing oh, in yeah. there, and that'd be the thing you target. That's a good know? thought, man. I, I kind of wonder uh, if you take this and put it on a topo, so you can see exactly where the creek goes, you know, mm -hmm. kind of comes off right here. There may be a creek crossing right in through here that you might be able to find uh, the spot to sit with a bow. And if you got a gun, you got even more range down that's in there. That's it, man. So. You know, it's funny, you switch the topo because that's how I found my next spot. I took what I learned about this spot over here that we really liked and I clicked over on topo and I was like, okay, well, where, where are the major uh, drainages mm -hmm. because really if you look at this you can tell that this is mostly upland and probably gonna be a lot of pine stuff mm -hmm. up in there right but you can see this one real major creek mm -hmm. right here that comes through this deal and that's how I found this spot right here and no, judging by nothing more than it just has this big bottom in it okay um, this is all gonna be pine trees I would imagine let's swap back over to hybrid and you got some private around here, and I think that's probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think that there's less pressure on private than there is public, which might go without saying, but that's not always the case everywhere you go, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I really like this place once I zoomed in because um, there's a access right here, but I don't know, like how many guys are going to go down to this thing? I don't, I don't know about pressure. You'd have to go in there and see. But I really liked this right here that I found. What is that? It's a place where either this was beaver dammed at one point in time a long time ago or there was a clearing here 40 years ago this looks like a little swamp mm -hmm. right there possibly mm -hmm. uh, hard to tell but either way that's going to be a thicket more than just regular trees mm -hmm. right and these might be some looks like some pines here too but there's some oaks and hickories along the river right here I think that there's a good chance that there is some bedding going on up in this deal right here. And then also a chance for bedding up here on these hills as well. So uh, if you're looking at a rut hunt, which in this area is going to be from November 10th until season ends most likely, you know, because it's going to have a, a really kind of flat line rut um, that somewhere in here, not really on that particular pin but somewhere you know it's pretty close to the creek and who knows you might have a secondary creek crossing right there or this big this little bend in the creek right here might give you a little bit of a pinch or something you can see that marsh mm -hmm. right there sure. on there whenever you click over to that yep. so yeah that's a low area right there gonna be some pigs in there as well but i think that this could be a really good spot to hunt just because of the general area it's in and how you kind of have two different systems that meet right yeah, there. For sure, man. This, this is a good spot, man. I like it. Both, you. both the things we found, which the first spot that we went and visited that he was showing you mm -hmm. guys is, is a spot that he found as well. And it kind of saved our day because we, <laughs> uh, we had walked around for a <laughs> while without lead. finding hardly any, any sign. So. so one of the things that you can bring up after saying that, there are deer to be killed here, and there are probably some decent deer, maybe even big deer to be killed. We've seen mm -hmm. that. Uh, in media, but yeah. um, I wouldn't go down here for a three-day trip kind of trying to kill a good deer. If you want to go hunt Sam Houston, you need to take your time and you put effort into it, and if you sit in a stand for quite a bit of time, there's a good chance that, that patience will pay off and you'll mm -hmm. find a deer. But it's not a place that I would go down and expect to go, you know, make a long weekend out of it and find a big buck. It's similar kind of to Davy Crockett National mm -hmm. Forest, which is another Map Scout Challenge video we did last year in 2020. We, uh, if you're here for the Texas stuff in particular, which if you're watching this, you probably are, we did uh, Davy Crockett, we did Lake Tawakini, we did Lake Whitney. So there are several of these, and we intend to do a lot of them. We want to try to hit a lot of the parts of the state so that everybody kind of has an opportunity to see what we see mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily that we're the experts but that we can all just glean information from each other and learn little things here and there that'll help us all uh, hopefully become more successful on public land so with that check those out in the description below if you're interested in them and remember this is your element living it